Thank you for that great introduction. I want to introduce you to something that's so important. Imagine a world without concussion. I have two sons, Nolan and Aiden. And sometime after the birth of my youngest child, my husband and I had a serious discussion. I didn't want to be on the pill anymore, and we didn't want any more children. So we decided that he would go in for a vasectomy. So it was done, and we thought it was over. But sometime later, I found out I was pregnant again. My doctor confirmed it, and she said, looks like they botched the vasectomy. So my husband and I had another very serious discussion, and this time, we made a very, very difficult decision. And I cried, and I cried, because I never thought I would ever be doing this. But you see, we were a young family with our whole life plan ahead of us, and you know, we had two little boys already that we loved so much. But we decided that we would have an abortion. And when I got to the hospital, the nurses were great because they know how hard it is for a married woman who already has a family, who already knows what it's like to have children, to terminate a pregnancy. And so it was done and we thought it was over. But a few days later, I realized I still feel pregnant. I went to a walk-in clinic, and they confirmed my worst fears. I went back to my doctor, and I said, you know, maybe this baby wants to live so badly. Maybe I should just continue on with the pregnancy. And she said to me, she gave me a long, hard look, and said, no, Joni, this baby is damaged. You don't want to bring a damaged baby into the world. Other women have made this decision, and they pay for it every day of their lives. So I had the second procedure done, and this time it worked. And I went back to being a loving mother and wife, and I went back to my career as a professional engineer. And I buried the story for almost 30 years. Several years later, I went back to school and studied Chinese medicine and started my practice. Then in 2012, my son Nolan had such a severe concussion that it temporarily blinded him. Since that day, I have devoted my life to helping people to heal their damaged brains. Because my purpose, I've discovered, is to make mental health and human potential the primary focus of healthcare throughout the world. So what does it take to heal damaged brain. Well, I've spent several years studying the brain and the mind and connecting the dots. I've written three books about the topic, including a bestseller, and I've helped many people, including professional athletes, to make a full recovery. And it doesn't matter how long they've had it, how many they've had, or how severe it is, they make a full recovery. So today we don't have a lot of time. I want to ask three questions that researchers really need to be asking. Why do some people get concussions and other people don't? What makes the brain weak and susceptible to injury? What heals the brain and keeps it strong? And lastly, how to diagnose a concussion. So why do some people get concussions and others don't? I mean, I was playing soccer one time uh, with the kids and, and the team, and I accidentally head, headed the ball right on top of my head. And I heard the crunch, and I felt it, but no, nothing ever happened. I have a friend who told me about how a four by eight foot um, particle board fell right on top of his head from a distance. He was fine. I have a friend who uh, was checked into the boards at an indoor soccer uh, center, the bang of it just reverberated around the huge building. He skipped one shift, came back to play. A few years later, I ran into him again. He never had a problem. So why do some people get them and others don't? Here are some clues that Chinese medicine teaches us. Each one of us is born with strengths and weaknesses.
But we don't know what they are until we run into a situation that upsets or angers us, that definitely causes some emotional pain. Oh, the latest information from Western um, medicine actually tells us that people with concussions and PCS have a pre-existing mental-emotional situation. So they're beginning to validate what we know. And a brain injury is always a sign of confusion. So what makes the brain weak? In one word, it's stress. You know, we can get angry for a moment and it can go away. That's the way it should be. We should be calming down in a few minutes. But for people who are experiencing chronic stress over and over, they never get out of that vicious cycle unless we make some real changes, okay? Because stress reduces neuroplasticity. It kills brain cells. So in actuality, your brain could be shrinking. It puts you into an endless cycle of stress, which is responsible for depression, anxiety, and Alzheimer's. It leads to a lack of control, for example, road rage. And it decreases activity in frontal lobes, reducing your ability to learn and to remember. Basically, stress makes you stupid because you can't think straight. So what heals the brain and keeps it strong? So if stress is about negativity and it's prolonged negativity, then what is it that makes us strong? Your mental state of mind is the only thing that matters because your mind is everything. The mind is everything. You don't do anything until you have a thought. You wanna to go to Starbucks? You get yourself up, you put your shoes on, you open the door, you go out. Everything always starts with a thought. So what are the things that can help us to build that brain? An attitude. An attitude is a combination of your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. A good attitude will give you good thoughts, good feelings, and good actions. And all these people here, they've overcome many difficulties in order to be as good as they are. Being a nonconformist. The opposite of courage is not the opposite of cowardice. It is the opposite of conformity. When you finally make a decision to be who you really are, that is when you will grow so strong. Because most of us grow up being told who we are. We're told about what we should be doing with our lives. How often is somebody actually asking you, what do you want? What do you really want in your life? Know any lawyers, doctors, other professionals, other people who are actually very successful, you know, making a lot of money, but they have really poor physical health? That's a big sign that they're not doing what they ought to be doing. They're doing what somebody else is, has told them to do. You know, you look at people like Stephen Hawkins and Helen Keller, they had their physical issues, but they had their mind. And they went ahead and they had the careers that they wanted anyways. Thinking, how many of you think? Do you all think here? Yeah, great. Okay. Thinking is when you use your, <laughs> is when you use your imagination, your intuition, your memory, your perception, and your reason. That's when you know you're thinking. Thinking is hard work. For most people, they are worried about something that is going to happen, that might happen in the future, or they're thinking about things that have happened to them in the past. Or we're all creatures of habit. Often we're not thinking about what we're doing during the day because we're automatically just repeating our habits every single day. So for most people, they're about 70, 80% in those areas. So we're really not thinking unless you're using all of those mental faculties. Einstein, I love talking about Einstein because 
He was a deep thinker. He used his intuition and his imagination to help prove that atoms and molecules exist. That's all he did in order to create his theory of relativity. He didn't need any physical proof. He just created it and thought things through. Thinking is hard work. <coughs> goals. If you already have goals, you're already successful. There was a study at Dominican University in California. They had a group of people that they divided up into five groups. So the first group was told to um, just simply have goals and think about them. Group two had goals, write them down. Group three have goals, um, have a plan. Group four have, have goals, write a plan, and have an accountability partner. Group five have goals, um, have an accountability partner, and also report to them on a weekly basis. So after four weeks, they came back to this group to find out how they did. So groups two to five did better than group one, and group five did better than anybody. So while it's important to have goals, you gotta be doing something about them. And anybody who has goals, you never quit. Because if you have a goal and you never quit, you will eventually succeed, always. When my son got his concussion, he was playing soccer. And he was on one side of the field, a defending, when for some reason the teammate on the other side of the field decided to kick the ball towards him. Well, he wasn't ready for the ball because he was busy. And so he was hit right up above the ear here. And he went down, his teammates took him off the field and left him to recover. So it was while he was sitting there waiting, that's when he realized he couldn't see. And he waited another 10, 20 minutes, he doesn't know how long, but thankfully his eyesight came back. And then he made a decision. It was a hot day, they were short-handed, so he decided to go out back on the field even though he wasn't feeling very well but he felt at least his teammates could sub on and off and get a break. So he did that until the very end of the game. Then he drove himself home and he started to get headaches. He knew he had a concussion. And so what he thought he would do was he cut out all his extracurricular activities, but the one thing he couldn't stop doing was work because he was a very busy, uh, professional chemical process engineer. And so he continued to work. And then one Monday night, I got a call from him and he said, Mom, I got hit so hard in the head, I, uh, I went blind, I've got a concussion. Will you help me? He's a gr he was 28 years old at the time. So I had no idea what was going on. And of course I said yes. And <coughs> He immediately started to get better, but we determined that he was very unhappy at work. He had already mentioned something about a new boss that he didn't really like, you know, about six months before, but we didn't know how bad it was until he got that concussion. And the reason why there was a problem was that this supervisor at his very first meeting with his team of young engineers, told them, I want to be your friend. Now, this is a supervisor. These kids wanted somebody who was a leader, who was going to teach them. They didn't want a friend. So his best friend, my son's best friend at work, said, I'm going to look for work and I'm quitting, which is exactly what he did. But my son really loves working for this company. So, but he didn't want to work for this guy either. So for him it was, should I stay, should I go, stay, go? He was deeply confused. He didn't know what to do. He thought he only had two options. But when we were working together, I gave him a third one. And that was, you're not gonna make the same mistakes that I did in corporate. You're going to ask for meetings with this supervisor and you're going to ask him for what you want. And I said, there are no guarantees that this guy is gonna help you at all. And there's also 
you know, a chance that my own son would say, no way, Mom, I'm not going to do that. Because he's a quiet guy. He doesn't tell people what his problems are. But God bless him, he did it. And I'm always an accountability partner with my clients, so I talk to him about this every week. But, I mean, his progress just skyrocketed. So I started working with him September, early September. He was back playing regular soccer on November 2nd at the beginning of the indoor season. He um, continued to ski all winter long in the Canadian Rockies. He played pool league and he never, worked, uh, never lost a single day at work. I also worked with a professional hockey player in Europe. This young man had four concussions in five years. Okay. And he had his issues um, because he had his, it took him 18 months to recover from his third one, and that was from doing nothing. Uh, upon his fourth one, he thought, I'm not going to wait around. So he did some research, and he found me on YouTube. We got together, and he may also made rapid um, progress. In his particular case, he had gone home, gotten a job, he thought hockey was over, he got engaged to a girl, and then something terrible happened, and the engagement was broken, and the wedding was called off. So that was his stressful moment. But by helping him to release what the issue was, and not to blame himself, because he was blaming himself for everything that happened, his concussion symptoms also went away, and he actually led his team to go from a certain league up to the Swedish Premier League of Hockey, which meant 30 times of everything, salary and everything, so it was awesome. So, here are simple steps to diagnose a concussion anywhere. First of all, stay calm, don't assume the worst. Sit them up, they can't do that, go to the next step anyways, and examine the eyes with dilated pupils. Then you check for blurred or double vision by you know, whipping out a credit card and having them read it, see how easily they do that. Pull out another card and have them read that out loud too. Is that easy for them? And if they're sitting up, have them stand up. Can they do that easily? If they're standing, then have them walk a straight line Imaginary or real? How easily can they do that? You see, the more that they can do, the less severe the concussion is. If they're blacked out, then yeah, more than likely it's going to be very severe. But you don't have to be knocked out. Concussions are temporary, and they're no harder to heal than any other part of the body if we have a comprehensive treatment protocol like the one I have. So if you want to know more about my work, let's say that you know somebody or you yourself haven't felt good for a very long time. Maybe it started with a brain injury a long time ago. Maybe it's a hidden one. So you can take a really quick quiz to find out. If you or someone has a concussion right now, or you want to get ready for one, or you want to prevent one, then please pick up my bestseller at Amazon. Heal Your Concussion, How to Quickly and Effectively Get Back in the Game. And to find out more about my work, please visit me at concussionanswers.com or drjourney.com. Thank you very much. One question is Lin Wang from Shanghai here. Good. So then we have some more time. Okay. So there's time for questions. Any questions? I was curious, because um, you talked about what concussions are and how they got better, but I wasn't clear on what the things that you're doing that are assisting them. You talked about how stress was influencing them. What is it that you're doing that's assisting them after concussion? In the case of my son, it was about taking control of his life, because he thought he only had two choices, and neither of them he liked. So when he discovered that there was actually another choice, that he could actually deal with, then that he was brave enough to deal with, because he's a shy guy, 
that it really stretched him and it made him grow. And that really is the point about taking back control. So that was one of the reasons why he, he did that, because he knew that this was a step that he had to take. The interesting thing is that he's had to use these new skills in other personal, interpersonal situations, and he's been able to successfully navigate them without